Man, so for those that don't know, like, I just kind of peeped your account again, like, yesterday, and I mean, you're sitting at like... Welcome to USA FBL Fingerboard Podcast. I'm your host, Levine Cunningham, and I'm excited to be talking with Nick Deemer. Nick is also known as Nick Deemer on Instagram. Nick, thanks for coming on the podcast. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Definitely, definitely. You've been a uh, a rising viral sensation in the fingerboarding industry, nonetheless. For uh, people that don't quite know who you are, you make uh, short edits and... Uh, People are absolutely loving this. And so I'm stoked to have you on the show and uh, get to know you. And uh, we actually got to share a very huge weekend. We got to share uh, rendezvous and fingerboarding cons. So we're going to get into that as well. And then uh, before we kind of get into things, uh, we've got King of the Plies coming to an end. So you got till May 3rd to catch the top nine just awesome fingerboarding edits for those that don't know king of the plies is our it's our fingerboarding version of thrasher's king of the road so definitely check that out links are going to be in the description vote for your favorite team or your favorite edit by either liking commenting and viewing that video let's uh let's get into it nick how you been i'm doing really well so where are you out of like where are you located out of um i'm from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's a small town. Okay. So you're a small town kid. I kind of feel that as well. I lived in Branson, Missouri, which is, it's a touristy town, but still a small town at heart. Like, so, I mean, what, like, what's the largest city, I guess, would be close to that town? Um, I would say probably Philadelphia. Philly? How far is Philly? About three hours. Ah, three hours, not too, too bad. Okay. Just trying to get a picture of exactly where that is on the map. So, all right. So, are you a skateboarder first or a fingerboarder first? Um, I started skateboarding. Then um, my dad got me into fingerboarding. So, your dad got you into fingerboarding. I know that uh, a couple people mentioned in the uh, post and stuff about us uh, doing a podcast that your dad was a skate dad. So, kind of tell us the... Uh, the- the history behind that because apparently he's pretty well known i'm a little ignorant as far as like you know the older skate generation and stuff especially like in local regions and stuff like that so kind of kind of explain like you know the whole skate dad scenario like how did like is he a skateboarder like all his life is he super famous like what's the story there um he told me that he started to skateboard when he was like 12 um he said that his first skate board was like one from walmart uh he said that he didn't get his first actual skateboard until he was probably like 13 he got me in into it he's been doing it for a really long time he still uh does it we like to go ride around gotcha man so that's pretty cool to have you know a dad that's got that skating culture and kind of got you into this and uh you look like you truly truly enjoyed as well so you got that awesome just uh father-son bonding time for sure yeah because i saw i met him at the fingerboarding con an awesome dude and uh just chill vibes like i'm I'm jelly i'm jealous of that relationship (laughs) for sure so but yeah that's that's wild okay so when did you start fingerboarding um i started fingerboarding when i was two uh my dad had a whole uh dresser of the old tech decks and he throughout the years he gave me all of his old ramps and all the old uh tech decks that he that he had okay so you so finger warning is like ingrained into you like you're uh <laughs> Probably fingerboarding before you could walk. That's wild. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the short form edits. Let's talk about, I mean, did you start off with the short form edits or is it something that you just kind of like stumbled into? I, um, uh, I got into it as I started to take fingerboarding more seriously. Um, I recorded them on my phone and then, uh, I would edit them on cap cut and then uh once my first uh like actual 
viral video uh, went off, I started to get better at the editing. Uh, okay. I got more into it. So do you remember like the very first like viral edit that just kind of just took off? Um, it was, um, it was one at Shoe Carnival that I made. I did a right hook shot. Uh, it was a right hook, uh, basketball shot. Then I walked over, I did a kickflip to a board slide. Okay. Was this on Instagram or was it on TikTok or? Uh, it was on Instagram and TikTok. Gotcha. Man, so for those that don't know, like, I just kind of peeped your account again, like, yesterday, and I mean, you're sitting at, like, you know, 20,000 followers on Instagram, which is absolutely insane, and uh, you're on the younger side, too, like, I think you told me you're, what, like, 16? I mean, for a 16-year-old with uh, an account that's growing, like, rapidly fast like that, I mean, this is uh, some pretty cool Instagram clout, for sure. Like, I didn't have Instagram when I was in high school and stuff like that, but, I mean, if I did and I was creeping up on, you know, five, getting ready to hit six figures, like, I'd be, I'd be stoked. So, what are people, like, saying as far as, like, at school? Like, are you... Uh, kind of cool at school or are you still kind of kind of like me i kind of floated a little bit i was a jock but i kind of floated um i get recognized at school uh by some teachers by some kids uh the other day i was at lunch and a kid walked up to me he said yo i saw you on on a tech talk can we take a picture i was like yeah sure that's cool that's cool to get the to get the hype from all your peers and stuff i think that's the uh for me at least like i know that like just getting that praise and stuff from your peers people that you like love and respect the most that's uh that's huge it makes you feel good for sure so i know that you've been doing like some crazy collabs like i know you've got a little collab with like fingerboard christopher uh, I think you did like a mini podcast edit with him. Of course, you know, you're on the USFBL fingerboard podcast and I know uh, yeah. Sausage Ramps and you guys are also doing like some edits and stuff as well. So like you're kind of collabing with a lot of uh, big time industry guys too. So thank you. bro. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about your fingerboarding setup. Like what are your, what's your go-to? Um, I like dynamic trucks, slush pole decks. I I was always a really huge uh, fan of their graphics. I have this one that I got. Uh, my favorite wheels has to be uh, Maples. Okay. Out in Canada, I think uh, Toronto area. Met him at uh, the six stop, six skate stop last year. Yeah. Cool dude. He was at the fingerboarding con as well. Yeah, I uh, met him. Yeah, he was a really cool guy. Yeah, so are you are you a sponsored rider? Someone picks you up on their team yet? Yeah, um, I'm sponsored by Slush Colt. Um, I'm actually the first ever uh, pro on their team. Okay, so you're a Slush Colt team rider. That's awesome. I see the gear and stuff in the back, so I see you repping them strong. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's awesome. So, like, did you reach out to Slush Colt, or did Slush Colt reach out to you? They, um... So at Fingerboard Con, uh, I was there. I was there sitting down, and I, I was reading a magazine. And FB Christopher he called me over and said that he he wanted to make a video for TikTok, and they had me do a kickflip over a banana and then hit the eyebrow, and I did it first try, and uh, they had me read the banana and it said nick is pro for slush cult and i was actually there i tried to record the entire thing but realized that i didn't hit the record like halfway through and so i only oh, caught wow. like the second half of it a pretty iconic moment and so I wasn't sure if you were sponsored by anybody else, but I, I saw you basically kind of get inaugurated into Slush Cult right there at Fingerboard and Con for everybody. It was a pretty crazy moment. Yeah, it was a dream come true. 
especially. I mean, he had a whole room full of uh, just fingerboard going, fingerboard con, just attendees and stuff. And just, I mean, the the whole, the energy in that room was definitely on point for sure. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to recap that. I'm going to definitely try to find that and then definitely get that into the edit for sure. But yeah, it's a, uh, it was such a great, great weekend. So our first interactions, was that fingerboard con weekend or was it at the, like one of the USFBL fingerboarding tour stops? Um, So I, well, I, I didn't actually like meet you there, but um. It was last year at the USA Fingerboard League in in uh in Philadelphia. Gotcha. Okay, man, I wish you would have uh, came up and said hey, because I knew yeah. you kind of looked familiar, but I wasn't sure. Like I travel a lot, and I you know with the tour and uh, I go to yeah. events, and so I see like a lot of faces, and so for me, it's like. I remember faces, but I don't remember sometimes where I like met people, you know, fingerboard con weekend. People are like, Hey, you remember me? And I was like, ah, which tour stop? And they'll be like, Oh, it was the, the Phoenix, Arizona one. And I was like, Oh snaps, you're uh, and then he goes, tells me your handle. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And so like, you know, we're 30 something stops deep. And so like, you know, across North America. And so it's like, I'll meet people for the day and then like, I may not see them again for like a whole nother year until we do it the following summer. So it's uh, interesting for sure. But the tour man, like absolutely, absolutely amazing. We've got the sanctioned events happening this year. So check out our website. We've got dates. We've got uh 22 getting ready to lock in 23 events for the summer so definitely see if there is a event happening near you guys so for you listeners and uh we're excited we're excited to expand into new markets new regions and just basically just growing the competitive fingerboarding sphere as a whole so stoked where this is going and stoked where this is going to be for 2025 so man all right so Let's talk about fingerboarding con and rendezvous weekend. Friday, which is where most of us kind of started off, was we all pretty much were staying at the Hilton Hotel, basically, out in, I don't even want to pronounce that city. Can you pronounce it? No. Yeah, I don't want to butcher it. Anyways, everybody knows what city it is out there close to Andover and, uh, at the Hilton Garden. And so most of the people that were attending the Comic-Con were staying at the Hilton. And so we had, not when I say we, like I was included, but like they had um, <laughs> fingerboarding parks and stuff in the hotel lobby. There was a hotel bar and all that stuff. So there was food and there was beverage and drinks and we're all just kind of like hanging out and fingerboarding and catching up and just like, just kept just chilling like the vibe was really really good and i mean at one point i want to say there was like a hundred like 150 people in this hotel lobby fingerboarding and eating and drinking and watching the watching the game and stuff like absolutely magical yeah it was really cool so for me this was like my actual favorite part of the entire weekend was that friday night and it had nothing to do with the actual like weekend itself. Everybody was flying in, driving in, staying at the hotel. We're all seeing everybody for the first time in a very long time. And like yeah. the energy, the connections, the laughter, like it was such a such a great time. And then we've got rendezvous, I want to say 35 the following yeah, day, so. Saturday morning. Is that your first rendezvous? Yes. So first rendezvous. So tell us your experience as a first timer for at Rendezvous. It was really like loud. Uh, I liked it. Uh, There's definitely a lot of uh, people there. Um, Like it's like when you first walk in, it's a fingerboarder's uh, dream to to be in that warehouse. Yeah, this warehouse is massive like i don't know the square footage but it's like i don't know like five six thousand square feet and it has like i want to say close to like 40 parks in there now like it is like yeah, packed to the brim so 
lots of fingerboarding going on, lots of people just reconnecting. I mean, it's kind of like the Grammys for fingerboarding, I feel like, because everybody who's everybody is there. You know, obviously Mike Snyder's there. You had Loft, you got Good Vibes, USAFBL, Dynamics was there, Maple Wheels. I mean, the list like just goes like on and on and on and on as far as like who all showed up, who's all out there, stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. meeting everybody in one place is absolutely crazy. It's the only event basically in North America that I feel like we're everybody comes into one centralized spot and they all kind of like converse for me like i have to literally go on tour in order to meet all the people that we normally would meet on that like event so like maple wheels was there like i'd have to go to toronto do a stop in you know in toronto with six gates and stuff in yeah. order to meet him i have to go to like dallas to go meet up with like you know gone and good vibes and ryan and uh ryan reeves and all those guys and so like i've got to like literally kind of go from place to place to place to place to meet all those people but here like everybody comes in and i can meet them all in one place it's pretty cool rendezvous being your first uh this year's rendezvous being your first rendezvous like any key takeaways mm -hmm. my favorite part was well uh it was like friday night like you said when everyone was uh walking in when they're uh, arriving there that night was when the whole slush cult team got there they welcomed me uh we took pictures they hugged me it was really nice oh that happened at the uh the after party that saturday right yeah 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 so after rendezvous they had an after party and that was a pretty cool vibe as well they had uh, a lot of the parks and stuff from Rendezvous, like uh, Mike Snyder's Warehouse there. All the Black River parks were there. The Black River team was also out there, full full mm -hmm. effect. We got to meet uh, Tobias and Ollie and Denise and, uh, man, the other guy, was his name? Cassius, I think. Oh, man, he's yeah. going to kill me. I think his name is Cassius. I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I think yeah. the uh, the guy from England, or anyways, I'm drawing a I'm drawing a blank there. But there was definitely another <laughs> another Black River team member there for sure. And yeah. then we got to see the uh, the new Loft Park as well. So for those that weren't there, Loft put together a park and pretty much like last minute too, like absolutely gorgeous, like marble park it's a huge like i don't know six footer seven footer i mean it was a it's a big boy for sure yeah it was really cool um i filmed probably like like three edits on that park i loved it i actually didn't get a chance to really skate it that much it was so heavily uh sought after and everybody was kind of like on rotation with it but i did end up getting yeah. a couple clips but it's uh it's got a lot of energy it's that marble that pop that you get from your fingerboard whenever you're like you know popping off of uh marble or granite or anything like that like the amount mm -hmm. of energy and just it flows and feels so good all right let's talk about the fingerboarding con so this happened on sunday and this was my first fingerboarding con as well so i'm assuming it's also yours so tell yes. us a little uh tell us about your experience and stuff with fingerboarding con how how that was all put together uh, i loved it um it was really cool i got to meet a lot of new people and a lot of people that watch my videos a lot of cool stuff that was like sold out online um my sister keisha she got into fingerboarding there uh she got uh she got two completes and yeah no, i was gonna say there was a lot of vendors we actually, I got a small, I actually put together a small list. They had 16 vendors total. They had wow. uh, Crate Doctor, Fatty's Pre-Roll, Vag FB, Decent Bit, Lucy's, Flock Dex, Zag Heads, Devise, Loft, Yuck, Warm, ABC Parks, Slush Colt, Black River, Six Gates, and Flatface. Vendors on top of vendors on top of vendors. There was so much stuff that you could uh, pick up and buy on hand in person. 
Yeah, it was really cool. It's uh kind of like whatever I say, like you can't go to Walmart and pick that stuff up, but you can definitely go to Fingerboard Con and go pretty much pick up whatever you wanted at that point. So yeah, it was like a it was like a flea market, but for fingerboarders. Yeah, it was. I man, you could pick up pretty much anything from rails to Black River stuff to a loft balcony ledge. I mean, like there's just so much stuff that was there. And uh, it's one of those like, you know, if you got a credit card, you got to you got to leave that at home. You max it out real quick, real easy out there. My favorite takeaways from the finger warning con was the panels. So the panels, which I don't think were very well attended. I think everybody was so busy like fingerboarding that they didn't really notice all of the panels and stuff that were happening. But there was some really high value panels happening at the fingerboarding con. So Panel number one was uh, with Chris Daniels. He did the history of fingerboarding and mm -hmm. he absolutely killed that panel. And I don't think honestly that there's anybody that is more qualified to host that panel probably than Chris Daniels. And uh, he went in, I don't know how long it was. It was good, like, you know, 30 minutes or so, I would say. But like he literally broke down like the foundation of like, you know, the history of fingerboarding from start kind of getting it to where it is presently we did a huge q and a at the end a lot of good questions and stuff like that were asked and chris daniel answered all of those like down to the t but the really cool thing about his panel was is that he had like an original zorlock fingerboard from like 1992 like before tech deck basically like in the original packaging and so to have that to be able to see it and feel it and touch it and just like be able to look at that history it was pretty pretty cool and he also had like uh two of those fingerboarding magazines called the fingerboarder magazine and yeah. i've seen those floating around on instagram like people had pictures of it and stuff but i actually never got to touch it feel it flip through the pages that magazine is like the most legitimate fingerboarding magazine I have ever seen in my entire life. It looked like a Thrasher magazine. Like it had like just stories and interviews and all kinds of stuff, full color, like 60 pages deep, like very, very well put together fingerboarding magazine. And I was like, man, like someone needs to put together a fingerboarding magazine like this. Yeah. I don't know if you got to sit on that and got to see any of that stuff as well. Uh, well, I was actually reading one of the magazines uh, when FB Christopher, when he called me up there to make the TikTok. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And then the second panel was uh, how to get sponsored by Black River. And this panel hit real close to home for a lot of people because Black River, in my opinion, has the largest in the most like amazing team rider sponsor dynamic, I think, in our industry by far. And so, I mean, being sponsored by Black River is pretty much like the most ultimate goal for a lot of fingerboarders. And so for Black River, their whole like, you know, Denise was up there. I think Ollie was also up there. Tobias was up there as well. And uh, basically yeah. talking about how they do the process of basically getting people as a team rider and so the main takeaway from this panel for me was that they operate kind of like an mc like a motorcycle club and so basically you have to in the motorcycle world like if you want to be part of a club i don't you know i'll just throw out some names like if you want to be like a galloping goose or like a hell's angel or any of those other like crazy motorcycle clubs like you got to be what they call a prospect which is basically a team rider who's not a rider. They're basically going through all the notions, the grunt work of basically trying to become an official team rider. And so they operate kind of like that, where basically yeah. you got to be kind of like a prospect for, um, they didn't tell me like how long, but basically like it could be a year, it could be a couple years where you're like basically doing everything a team rider would do but you're not officially onto the team until they basically feel like, you know, you have great chemistry, you fit in with their brand. Like they, like you're basically, everybody's like on the same page, all the goals, all the marketing, everything is like aligned. And so 
I see like, at least for us here in the United States, like, you know, we've got companies looking for writers and stuff like that. And then they'll vet them a little bit, but they don't vet them on a scale like that Black River does. And I thought that was uh, very interesting to see how they did the process versus how we basically have been doing the process. And I feel like there's definitely a huge gap there. And so there was a lot of cool knowledge, a lot of great questions and stuff like that being asked there for sure. Did you actually sit in on that one as well? I was actually upstairs in my room. It's a it's a long day. It's uh it's a long, long day for sure. You got lucky you're at the hotel and all that. So you can always go grab a quick bite to eat and all that other stuff. So yeah. all right. And so the third panel, panel three, is is fingerboarding a sport. And so you know I had to sit out on that one. Yeah, they actually had a panel three talking about, you know, is fingerboarding a sport? And so for me, this was a very eye-opening panel because I'm literally sitting in a room with all my peers. You know, United States Fingerboarding League is basically working on making fingerboarding a competitive sport. And so for me to sit in and listen to everybody's thoughts, opinions, on you know should fingerboarding be a sport is fingerboarding capable of being a sport you know just the general opinions of you know should that be made into a sport versus keeping it on a hobby artist type level and stuff it was very interesting very eye-opening and stuff for sure and so for me to be able to sit down there listen to people's opinions ask some questions and stuff like that as well and just basically getting people's thoughts and opinions as to how we push it into the competitive fingerboarding sphere. It's uh that was a very, very close to home, very good panel for sure. And then of course, uh that pretty much kind of wrapped up the last of the fingerboarding con. We got, you know, probably a good hour or so fingerboarding stuff like that after the uh panels and whatnot. I think they actually extended the hours to the con as well. I think it was supposed to get done at four. I think we are uh it will still fingerboard for another hour or so after, so like around five or whatnot. And so it was a very awesome weekend. Definitely one of the largest fingerboarding weekends in history. The energy for the rendezvous, the after party, the fingerboarding con, like definitely history in the making for sure. Yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, it was the best weekend that I ever had, hands hands down. It was I, I agree. I think, I don't think I've had that much fun fingerboarding for that long. Like I've been to events that were like, you know, very, very fun. My events are very, very fun, but we haven't had a two day back to back full itinerary with nothing but fingerboarding. And this was definitely uh one of the best fingerboarding weekends of my life as well. So hands down, like top tier, Six Gates, Black River, and flat face came in and clutch slush cold i think as well was part of that as well so they were uh yeah it was really cool yeah they put together a banger of a weekend for sure <laughs> and then after the fingerboarding con i'm assuming that you drove you drove back home right we left on monday 10 o'clock yeah it was about a six hour drive gotcha yeah, I left Monday as well. I actually ended up missing my flight. And this would be a great time to do the Listen to Win contest. All right, so we've got LIT, Lost in Transition. They are giving away a 36 by 98 medium kick deck. And uh, Nick Deemer here has put together the challenge. So... Nick is talking about you're going to need to do a kickflip over food with the eyebrow in a Nick Deemer style edit. So this is not going to be who did it first. This is going to be who does it the best. So we're looking for the best quality short yes. edit of someone doing a kickflip over food with the eyebrow. And if you can't do the eyebrow, because I can't do the eyebrow, put some uh, put some style into the uh, the facial expression for sure. We know you know what we're talking about. So yeah. you're gonna need to put together this short form edit, and you're gonna need to tag Nick Deemer, USAFBL, 
and USFBL underscore FBP. So not who did it first, but who does it the best. All right, Nick, you have any uh, any hobbies that you know people may not know besides finger warning? Um, I like to do, I like to paint a lot. Um, I like to make my own uh, stickers. Um, I like to shoot guns. Um, I like to scooter. Um, uh, I really like to pool a lot. Okay. Uh, I take that really seriously. I used to play a lot of pool back in my early 20s and stuff. I think that was more the kind of like bar scene type stuff. I was really, really good at pool at a younger age and stuff for sure. And then I actually just got into guns as well. You're early to the party, but I'm a little late to the party. So my brother-in-law, he's uh, started collecting guns and stuff. And so we just started shooting guns uh, from time to time, basically here in the last year or so. Looking to definitely getting into uh, more into the gun game for sure. Pretty cool that you're uh, already into it and stuff like that for sure. I think that's a valuable skill. And then you've got my favorite part of the interview which is questions from the internet so we go on the uh internet we go on instagram and facebook we put a post out basically saying hey we've got nick on the mic this week tell us your questions and the internet did not disappoint you got uh you got some fans you got a lot of questions come in i don't know if we have enough time to go through all of them but we're gonna knock out as many as we can all right so question number one who was the first fingerboarding page you started following? Oh wow. Um I think it was FB Christopher because um I saw one of his uh Velletry videos and I thought that was really cool, especially for people who uh like to fingerboard but they don't have a lot of um money. I like his uh, Dollar Tree hack videos too. He uh, he's cracked the code as far as like fingerboarding yeah. on a budget. All right, question number two: Where do you see yourself in fingerboarding five years from now? I'm hoping to g- get more followers. Um, I want to make people happy. Um, I'm hoping that fingerboarding can be my job, and I want to s- stick with it, hopefully forever. That's a, that's a solid five-year plan. I feel the same way. That's kind of where I'm at as well. Like if I could fingerboard full-time and uh, do this for a living, that would be the ultimate dream for me as well. Yeah. All right. Next question. How often do you pick up your fingerboard on average per week? I at least uh, do my fingerboarding at least like 20 minutes a day. Um, I go live here and there a week um i i make like two videos per day um uh, i at least try to make one a day uh at school i practice it at lunch okay you're uh that's a real content creator schedule right there you're talking about daily content so i respect that that's not easy all right, next question. Best food you have done a trick over? It was probably um a smash burger uh from a restaurant where I live. It's called Big Times. They have really good pizza. Uh they have really good wings there. Um their company logo, it's a pizza um pizza riding a skate forward and i think that's really cool uh the owner she loves my videos okay okay all right next question wawa or sheets i was gonna say so before the tour i wouldn't even have known what a sheets is and if I wouldn't have been up to like rendezvous, this is my second rendezvous. So I know what Wawa is because I've seen the gas stations now, basically yes. out of out of Boston. So these are two gas stations. So Wawa is basically an East Coast thing, uh, Northeast, I guess you would say. And then Sheets, which I've seen that in the Midwest. And uh, 
I feel like Sheets is definitely the better gas station. I it's got a better um, it's got a better kitchen. They're pumping out like crazy, Yeah. like a whole whole menu, restaurant menu, basically. Yeah, it's But really cool. the real question is: Is it Sheets or Bucky's? And I got to go, you know, Bucky's being top tier. I call it Boosies. <laughs> um, I have never been to one. I heard that it's really cool. I heard that they have um, like really good fried chicken, and like uh, and I heard that they have really good uh brisket and. Yeah, I want to go to one. I think it'd be really cool to film a tiny uh, fingerboard Uh, edit. you would kill it with the fingerboard edits and Boosie's. So Yeah, it'll be awesome. Boosie's is literally like the largest gas stations, I feel like, in North America. They've got like 100 pumps, like literally 100 pumps. And the store is like the size of a Walmart. Like it's like if a gas station, if Sheets and Walmart Supercenter had a baby, it's it would be Boosie's. The food there at Boosie's is top tier. They have the best brisket. The best sandwiches. They've got burritos. Are they five hours later? They everything in there like slaps. So they make their own uh, jerky, candies. They got a coffee bar. They got a slushy bar. Like fifteen, twenty slushy machines. All right, last question. Who's your inspiration in fingerboarding? I really look up to FB Christopher and Jake FB. Um, I like them. I've been watching them for for a while now. Um, they they definitely uh, inspire me, and it was really cool that I got to meet them. They're definitely two uh, cool guys. I've known fingerboard Christopher for quite some time. I've uh, did a podcast episode and stuff like that with him. I want to say I've met him on the West Coast as well in my travels. And uh, Jake, That's Jake is new. I got to meet Jake for the first time over one of his fingerboard con weekend. He's a cool cat. Yeah, he, he is. And so with this, is there uh, anyone you want to recognize or give a shout out to? I'm sure you got a long list. I want to give a shout out to to uh, Slush Colt. Thank you guys for having me on the team. It's a dream. And I want to say thank you. It definitely changed my life. I know you definitely want to give a shout out to the fam and the parents and all that other good stuff as well. Yeah, my uh, dad, thank you. My mom, uh, you guys helped me in fingerboarding uh, for a long time. They always uh, encouraged me. They went with it. Uh, I want to shout out my sister, Keisha. She helps me record uh, some of my videos, and she helps me a lot. And, yeah. Okay. All right, Nick, where can people find you on the internet? Like, what platforms? Uh, you guys can find me on TikTok at Nick Bear Fingerboard. Um, you can find me on on uh, Instagram. It's Nick Deemer's son. All right. I'm going to make it easy for everyone. I'm going to have those links in the description for you. Nick, it's Thank been you. a absolute pleasure. And thanks for coming on to the show. Thank you, dude. It was awesome. No worries. Till next time. Peace.